Is there a connection between the impact of the global financial crisis in a region and how likely its inhabitants were to survive the COVID-19 pandemic? The new research suggests that the impact of the financial crisis was still a matter of life and death for some people a decade later. Stephen, hello, welcome. Hello, Tim. Good to see you. Now, Stephen, what's the hypothetical here? What's the mechanism by which the impact of the global financial crisis might have worsened the impact of COVID-19? So we are uh, considering the following possible channel, which is one of the channels, which is that basically the financial crisis uh, would have uh, deteriorated the uh, the sovereign's position, um, uh, public finance position, and that therefore then the spending on public health is uh, is lower, and, and therefore the uh, preparedness for something like a pandemic uh, could be lower. That is sort of the channel that we have in mind. Uh, but there's other channels. There's also, for example, uh, the financial crisis affecting uh, the uh, living arrangements of uh, individuals, uh, such that, for example, uh, youngsters uh, end up back at the at the family home, uh, in which case there would be uh, more uh, possibility, so to speak, for uh, pandemic transmission, for virus transmission. So, but the one that we are focusing on in the paper and that we also have the data for is basically the fact that the uh, uh, budgetary position of the sovereign is weakening and that therefore over time there's less spending on public health and that therefore the public health sector at time of impact is, uh, is weaker than it could have been, so to speak. But this seems very ambitious to me because there's a decade between the two events and multiple policy regimes will have come and gone, a lot of things will have happened. Is, is it possible to control for all of the other things? Absolutely. So this is this is really one of the major challenges. Um, um, there's others, but this is for sure one of the challenges that we have. Uh, and uh, so clearly, at the same time, the financial crisis is also very big. I mean, for many countries, there was a, a severe uh, effect, um, both on, on, on the economy itself, but also on, on the sovereign. And uh, therefore, given the order of magnitudes here, it is still, it, it's still possible that there is a lingering effect over such a long time span. And of course, we're going to do our very best to, you know, given the uh, possibilities at that more aggregated level, to control for some of these other uh, events that were occurring during this time period. Um, and we're going to have a number of controls that capture then also the impact on uh, GDP performance, on, on, on also public health, the, the level at which public health was maintained. Despite all of this, all of these controls, one can see a lingering effect, which is actually not, not small. I mean, so to, to this extent, uh, and then we do this at the country level, but we also do an analysis uh, within country in Spain uh, and again also there the, the, the there's lingering effects of, of, of the financial crisis which also had regional variations so we should be clear on which countries and regions we're looking at here you did it uh, in Spain at a, a regional level didn't you we, and uh, then throughout the euro area that's correct so we, we basically we started the analysis uh, with 23 European countries uh, the reason for choosing Europe is also the way in which the uh, pandemic basically was vectored from uh, from Asia into into Europe, in, in starting in, in Italy and then spreading further. Um, and then we also so looking at the European countries cross country, and then looking in Spain uh, cross province. That is basically what we currently have in the paper. Um, and then, I mean, we're now collecting data for the US, also for South America, which then was came later. Uh, yeah. So that's basically the analysis we currently do is European level and then uh, Spain. So starting off here, how did you measure the severity of the financial crisis by region? So at the country level, we go uh, for uh, three measures um, at basically, of course, over varying periods, but we have uh, um, output loss, so potential versus actual, over potential. Um, and then we also use uh, actual changes in, in, in GDP occurring during the period, during the financial crisis period. 
And we also look at the uh, CDS, um, CDS uh, uh, Premia, uh, to give us a sense of, of the, uh, the stress at which the potential the sovereign is, uh, is situated. And then for the for the province uh, for the provinces in, in in Spain, we are going to also go for um, changes GDP at that level, and we are going to uh, construct measures actually quite um, uh, granular. We we um, look at the the buildup, if you want, of the debt during that time period. Also at the province level, we actually take this from we start from the municipal level. So we have a measure of the uh, accumulation of, of uh, local uh, sovereign debt uh, that we're going to use. So, so to some extent, at, at the country, at the cross-country level, and at the province level, we have if, um, loss in output, if you want, or, 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 or lack of economic performance measured um, by, by these aggregate measures of, of economic uh, output. And we look at the sovereign at the cross-country um, CDS and at the um, province level, then the build-up in debt um, to give us basically um, a complete overview or potentially complete overview of the way in which the financial crisis affected both the economy and then and then the sovereign. Were you able to get enough variation in that? What's the difference between the least effective and the least affected and the most affected? Yeah, so you no, know, for sure, the variation is there among the 23 countries. The span is uh, in terms of uh, output losses is order of magnitude 40 to 50 uh, uh, percent. Uh, and the same is for Spain. We have clearly areas that are uh, less and, 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 and more affected. I mean, so there we have we have adequate span as well. And you're looking at the impact on COVID deaths. Um, is it possible to, to measure these again at a, a regional level? Because I would have thought quite a lot of the policy interventions, especially in, in Spain, would have happened at a, a national level. So again, is this something that you can measure effectively? So this is for sure a second challenge. So, so the, the way we, we conceive this is that clearly we need to be at point of impact. The reason being once the extreme, like the, the lockdowns uh, come in place, one can no longer argue that to some extent the public health sector is adequately measured in its performance of dealing with the pandemic, because then we're all sitting at home. In principle, we shouldn't go to the hospital anymore. So to this extent, we need to be very careful exactly when we measure this. So in the Cross country, what we do is we basically, within March, which is the time that Italy uh, had its lockdown, we basically look for every country that has actually, is already at the point of impact of having 100 um, cases per 1 million. So basically, we, we see within that very uh, tight frame, time frame of March, uh, when exactly these these countries were um, uh, affected, and then we we measured that at that point. So so this is basically when the the cases were um, you know at at a, at 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 a, at a, a comparable level of a hundred or one million. For Spain, we have to to resort indeed to a, a a more general assessment of the impact curve. Why? Because as you rightfully say, there is the the fact that there was a, a national lockdown. And so what we do then is, to some extent, we feel our way through the entire curve in, in the sense that we assess uh, what the, what the uh, death outcome is at various rates of impact. And also then we look at peak growth. So we have basically, when we look at the uh, Delta new cases, we also then look, we, and to some extent, we end a bit there because then afterwards, obviously, the, uh, the lockdown starts biting and things like that. So, but we really are documenting for the whole, for almost the whole curve of impact then. Um, but you're absolutely right. It's a major chance because once the lockdown gets in place, then it's difficult to start disentangling. Uh, is the public health sector performing now in, in terms of being able to care for the patient? And then also you have all the developments in terms of caring for patients which come in. So, so it's really at that point of impact that we want to make. As, as good as possible. And so, of course, the big question that we'd be leading up to with all this work, Stephen, how did the severity of the financial crisis impact deaths from COVID-19? Well, the impact is not small. I mean, to some extent, if you if you think about sort of, um, you know, two standard deviations, which is typically, say, going from 
fairly bad to fairly good in terms of performance during the financial crisis. Uh, this would, and this is true at the cross country level, and this is true in Spain. Um, so going from fairly good performance during the crisis to fairly bad, two standard deviations around the mean side, uh, delivers an additional death per uh, 100 cases, which, as you may recall, sort of the, the, the overall, say, statistics on this is like one per 100 uh, uh, deaths. Uh, so this would be a fairly sizable impact. It's almost uh, you know, a doubling, if you want, of that basic statistic. Of course, that statistic luckily has come down over time, but say at impact, this was a bit what people were talking about. And so we find an, a, a doubling going from say, a good province or a, a good country when it comes to having withstood the financial crisis or having been uh, you know, not so affected by the financial crisis to a not so good country or a not so good province uh, that delivers sort of uh, an additional death per hundred. As you say, this is a sizable effect. So. To be clear, can we rule out the other interpretation, which is that the places that were most affected by the financial crisis tended to be poorer anyway, and so they will not have invested in any situation as much in healthcare, and so therefore they are much more likely to have a worse outcome from COVID-19. Is that a, a credible interpretation? So... In level, so to speak, we try to control for this by actually having a number of uh, control variables like the level of GDP also. Uh, actually, interesting, we can even control for the number of curative beds, uh, both um, uh, just prior to the impact and also the, um, uh, if you want, the combination of the number of beds prior to the financial crisis and the, the additional beds that were uh, created or, or, or removed um, in the 10 year period. But I think a, a more um, uh, a more uh, precise question, uh, answer to your question would also be the exercise that we have at the, at the, uh, in Spain, where we're actually also seeing how the, uh, our financial crisis measures are actually projectable on the change, the change in the number of curative beds over this time period, which is then, you know, projectable, if you want, onto the, the number of uh, deaths that we have uh, during the, the, the first uh, impact of the pandemic. So, so to this extent, in this exercise, for sure, it's no longer arguable that the level at which the care is actually present is actually uh, potentially uh, an additional explanation. Now, we're not excluding this. I mean, we're trying to control for this actually doesn't show up all that significant in most of the exercises. So it is really, it, it, it's really hard to argue. Of course, there are many other variables that we may want to consider and, and, and for sure we will uh, as we move forward. But um, at first sight, it doesn't seem to be uh, that it's only this, uh, this level effect of, 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 of public health or, or general performance of, that, that is responsible given those controls and given that these controls don't blow. And then also this additional exercise where we actually see to some extent uh, this, this direct pathway to, to, the, to the change in the number of beds as a consequence of the financial crisis. You've provided us with strong evidence that you feel the effect of one large crisis in the next crisis when that turns up, even if it's years later. So hopefully now we will soon be coming out of the COVID-19 crisis. What can we learn about this in how we should uh, manage, prepare for what happens when the next crisis comes along? Because there will be another one. Yeah, so I mean, I guess to some extent, um, one could argue that uh, the, the, the effects of the financial crisis are you know, multidimensional. And, and, and to this extent, this is a, yet an additional element of, of, of such an effect uh, that one even over a longer time period potentially can pick up. So, so, so all the policies that are being put in place to sort of avoid uh, financial instability, you know, could well also help also then to deal with future other types of crises like pandemics, and etc. So this is one part of the answer. I mean, the second Part inevitably has to be there clearly um, making sure that the public health sector is, is, is ready to deal with this type of pandemics uh, is, is you know, uh, an additional 
small takeaway if you want of the of the work that we that we're trying to do so and of course it's always easy to to save on this i mean uh, it, 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 it's obvious that that when when the the government has to make its budget that they're going to be easier and and, and more difficult categories to 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 save on and maybe this turned out not to be uh, a very great choice to, to sort of save a bit more on that i mean of course who could have foreseen the pandemic but then again well Stephen, it's a it's a good reminder that for a lot of people uh, the crisis was never really over and uh, it's a warning for what we should be doing in the future but Thank you very much for talking to me about it today. Thank you so much, Tim. The paper we've been talking about is called Misfortunes Never Come Alone, from the financial crisis to the COVID-19 pandemic. And the authors are Antonio Moreno, Stephen Ongena, Alexia Ventula Vengazi, and Alexander Wagner. It's in COVID Economics 71. Well, thanks for watching. And remember, you get all the latest research on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in COVID Economics. It's free. It's open access. It's at cepr.org.